I always wanted to grow the spiciest pepper in the world, so I did it this summer. But I didn't stop at the spiciest pep in the world. I also grew the second spiciest pepper in the world, the pepper that's the key ingredient to jerk chicken, and the pepper behind the pickling tradition. I had never grown hot peppers from seed before, so I was amazed at the results. At first I wasn't even sure this was gonna work, but we had to start somewhere and let me tell you, it worked and my hands were ready to get dirty and my lips soon to be spicy. But I was a little nervous to start with the spiciest pepper in the world, because that was a little bit bold. So I started with a natural star runner up and pepper favorite, the hot wax banana pepper. These are the peppers that you usually find in your sandwiches that taste pretty pickly. I would know based on my frequent visits to Mr. Sub. Anywho, they taste amazing, almost like a tangy pepper with a subtle touch of heat that's not overwhelming. Surprisingly, they're actually just a variety of the chili pepper and they've been grown for more than 6,000 years. So it's safe to say that as popular as they are worldwide, they're also equally as easy to grow. So if you're looking for a good variety of hot peppers to grow, choose the hot wax banana pepper to start your garden off off right and do it with me right now. Well, the journey began and I got to work. I broke open the hot peppers, removed the seeds, saved some of them in a plastic bag for next growing season, and then I placed some of the other seeds on a piece of damp paper towel to get ready to germinate. Not Germany, but Germany. Then I waited five whole days for the little tails to grow, and once they did, they were ready for soil. Now, of course, here you can buy the packaged seeds, but if you know me and my channel, then you know that I like to grow the fruit straight from the seed inside of the fruit. It's more challenging and it's more fun that way and you'll learn more about the trial and <gasps> basis behind growing plants. Anywho, I placed the little seeds tail down in the soil and I waited another two weeks for the seedlings to actually shoot up. And since we had two varieties of hot wax banana peppers, we had two plants straight from seed and this was the growth of one of them. It did amazingly. And as for the second plant, this was the process of that one. It also did really, really well. And as these grew, I learned that these peppers are also known as banana peppers or yellow wax peppers. They're a milder hot pepper compared to the super hot peppers we all know and they're often used in salads, sandwiches, for pickles, as a topping for pizzas, they're really good. And you know what? I decided that I was gonna pickle these because I just love the pickled wax banana peppers. As they were growing, I picked some off of the plant so that I had some yellow, some orange, and some red hot banana peppers to pickle because the longer the pepper stays on the plant, the darker the color will be and the spicier the pepper will be. I actually tried to taste the yellow one because it's supposed to be less spicy and this is what I thought about it. Spicy. Oh my god, yeah. Anywho, so you know what I had to do. I got ready to cook some stuff up in the kitchen from the garden to the plate. First up was one of my favorite dishes, Mexican corn. But of course I had to top that with yellow hot wax, banana peppers, and that tasted absolutely divine. Highly recommend 10 out of 10. While I got ready to pickle the rest of the banana peppers, I learned that the intro of chili peppers to Europe and Asia is actually as a result of the Colombian exchange. And that was basically the widespread transfer of plants and animals between the Americas and the old world after Christopher Columbus's voyages. Soon after that, banana peppers became really popular in Italy and America because of their mild heat and their sweet flavor and specifically pickling them in divine dishes. So you already know I needed to try pickling these. If you want to pickle your own peppers at home too, this is exactly what you have to do. Just add vinegar to half a jar and then fill the rest up with water. Pour that into a pot and add salt, sugar, garlic, and some spices. Then bring that to a low boil in a pot and wait. Now as that was boiling, I got to cutting the peppers and once they were cut and the concoction was almost unboiling, I added my peppers to the jar and then I added the boiling concoction to my jar and let it sit until it cooled. Make sure you don't cover that up until it's fully cool because then it can explode in the fridge. I also forgot to add my yellow peppers so I added them right in there before it cooled down and now these basically have to sit there for six weeks until I can try them. Well at this point, I think I finally became ready to try growing the hottest pepper in the world. 
At first, I thought it was the ghost pepper, so I got some ghost peppers to become the spicy queen, but I realized that while ghost peppers were once considered the most spicy in the world, they have actually been surpassed by a different pepper. And yes, I did grow those after growing the ghost peppers, but I gotta tell you the story about this ghost pepper first. I was still semi-okay with growing the second hottest pepper in the world, so I got to work and I decided to take the seeds from this semi-underripe ghost pepper, but that is okay because it still worked. I got the seeds on a piece of damp paper towel ready to Germany and I waited two weeks. After two weeks, I woke up one morning to my seeds sprouting and that's when I knew they were ready for a bed of soil. Well, after I planted them in soil, the pepper game really started and I was winning because we had some nice peps over here. And while they grew, I learned that ghost peppers actually originated in the northeastern regions of India, Bangladesh, and Sri Lanka. And they were traditionally used in local cuisine to add some heat to dishes. They're even used in some religious rituals and festivals in India. And I'm sure you can imagine I was surprised to find out they have a cultural significance as well. But it's ghost peppers that are actually used in various forms including pickled, powdered, and as a key ingredient in hot sauces. The extract is sometimes even used to make extremely spicy condiments and, you know, the one chip wonder challenge. And as soon as they were ready, I got ready to harvest my peppers and I decided, well, what better idea is there than to make some ghost pepper powder to use as the ultimate seasoning? Don't ever be mean to me because if you come over and I cook for you, just be careful. Just kidding. Anywho, I got to work real excited for the second hottest pepper powder in the world to be in my hands from my homegrown seeds, all from homegrown peppers. I dehydrated my peppers in the oven since I don't currently own a dehydrated. I set it to the lowest setting, which was about 170 degrees, and then I put them in there for 15 whole hours. I was hoping it would be around eight hours because I was nervous to have the oven on all day like that, but they weren't ready until hour 15, and it's okay because they were looking very crunchy. And that's exactly how you want them to be if you're dehydrating some peppers at home for powder too. I wasn't really sure how to grind these things though, so at first I tried grinding them up with my electric salt grinder. I added them in there, but they wouldn't really crush very easily, so honestly, I just used my hands, I probably should have used gloves, crushed them up, and that worked really well. And they were so dehydrated that they just crumbled right up and they were ready to go. I even saved some of the seeds to try and grow for next year too, and I was very careful not to touch my eyes after doing this, because after all, these are the second spiciest pepper in the whole world. It is important to know that the heat level of ghost peppers can vary depending on growing conditions, soil, and some other factors. This variability adds an element of unpredictability to their spiciness. So I'm sure you can imagine I was excited to taste the ghost peppers and almost pass out from the spiciness, and that just means we grew them well. And listen, although ghost peppers were once considered the world's hottest pepper, I still needed to grow the spiciest pepper in the world, and I later learned that this has actually been surpassed by none other than the Carolina Reaper hot pepper. And when I found this out, I was quite upset because I spent 16 weeks growing these peppers to find out that these ghost peppers aren't actually the hottest peppers in the world like I thought they were. I sprinted to the grocery store, well actually four different grocery stores because I couldn't find these things anywhere. Finally did though and I purchased some Carolina Reaper peppers ready to grow. Remember, I was on the prowl to grow the spiciest pepper in the world, okay? And just so you know, I didn't have any homegrown Carolina Reaper peppers so that's why I decided to buy a plant instead of growing it from the seed like I usually like to do. But I didn't care, okay, because the Carolina Reaper holds a Guinness World Record for the hottest pepper reaching over 2.2 million SHU. And SHU just stands for Scoville Heat Units, and it's a measure of the spiciness based on the concentration of capsation, which is the chemical responsible for the sensation of the heat in peppers. Well, once they turned red, I brought them inside and added them actually into my ghost pepper pile to make the spicy powder seasoning because at first I had mixed them up and the peppers actually looked kind of similar, the ghost peppers and the Carolina Reapers, but that's okay because now we're gonna have the first and the second spiciest pepper in the world into powder, okay? Anywho, the last pepper that I really wanted to try growing and the main ingredient in jerk chicken and pepper pot soup is the Jamaican Scotch Bonnet Hot Pepper. And like the last pepper we grew, I purchased this plant from the store since I had none at home and they were pretty hard to find in the fruit form in the grocery store. And basically all I had to do was wait after I bought it and repot it as it needed and as it grew, I learned that these 
Texas peppers are considered one of the hottest in the world, so I guess we can say they're the third hottest. But although not the hottest, they've got a distinct flavor beyond their heat, and they're most definitely a crucial component of jerk seasoning, which is a flavorful spice blend used in Jamaican cuisine. And I love that I learned that these peppers have cultural significance in the regions where they're commonly used, so they aren't just ingredients, but symbols of the bold and rich culinary heritage of the Caribbean. But I was confused as ever to see that one of the plants started growing these berries that couldn't be blueberries, but if they weren't blueberries, then what are they? Well, you guys are honestly amazing, and I learned from you that these were in fact berries from the nightshade family. If they grow in clusters, they're usually safe to eat, but if they grow alone, they can be very deadly and seen as poison. So be careful, only eat the ones that grow in clusters. But I learned that either these got mixed up with my pepper plant I bought, or they just randomly grew. And as confused as I am, I thank nature for the gifts that she gives me, because I'm not complaining that these showed up. And I did taste it, and it tasted like a tomato, which makes sense because tomatoes are from the nightshade family. Anywho, of course I saved the berries, I harvested this little Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper, and currently I have not yet made jerk chicken with this one, but that's next on the list as more of my scotch bonnets come in. And by the way, you should know that I also did try growing regular peppers, green peppers. And those are now currently looking really good. I just placed the seeds right in soil and it started to grow nicely. I think I just planted these a little too late in the summer, but I'm starting to see little baby peppers growing. So that's an amazing sign that soon they'll be ready to harvest and cook in the kitchen. So, my friends, there you have it. A full summer's journey growing hot peppers and many varieties at that. We started with the hot wax banana pepper, moved on to the second spiciest pepper in the world, the ghost pepper, and then we went for the spiciest pepper in the world, the Carolina Reaper, and then we attempted to grow the jerk chicken pepper, the Jamaican scotch bonnet. Plus, we dabbled with a regular green pepper and learned about what these little blueberry-like berries were that ended up growing with my pepper plants. Well, we took all of those peppers from the garden to the kitchen, cooked up some Mexican corn topped with hot banana wax peppers, some pickled banana peppers, some ghost and Carolina Reaper pepper powder that can literally kill, and we're still waiting for our scotch bonnets and regular green peppers to ripen even more so that we can bring them into the kitchen and cook with them. I bet you can agree with me that this was a wild ride and one of my favorites this summer. Thank you so much much for watching my channel this week. It means the world to me that you do. And it would equally mean as much if you didn't forget to like, comment, follow, subscribe. And remember that on this channel, we take the seeds from inside exotic fruits and grow them into full-blown house plants that fruit. Never forget that I love you. And I'll see you next week.